Good Tuesday morning, sixth grade. We are in the midst of our very last week of sixth grade. Last week of school before summer break. Hooray! Uh, let me know some of your plans for summer. As of right now, I really don't have any. Um, I've been trying to think of some things that we can do because I know my kids are going to be getting very antsy once they don't have schoolwork to do. So i um, trying to think of some fun things, but there's still so many things closed and I'm still a little um, hesitant to get out amongst everybody. So I'm not quite sure what our summer plans are yet, but I know that for Isabella and Landry, they are sleeping in and staying up as late as possible. That's part of them. So, but so text me, Jupiter me, whatever. Let me know what some of your summer plans are. Maybe it'll give me some ideas for my press and kiddos. I need some. Let's go ahead and get this day started. I don't want to take up too much time for your schoolwork since it's your last week of school. If we were in the classroom together this week, I promise you we would not be doing much work. We would be doing a lot of exciting things and sadly, we're not together, so I don't want to burden you too much with schoolwork on your very last week. But there are a few things that we need to get done. So let's bow our heads, start our day with prayer today, and ask the Lord to be with us and help us to do our best. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness to us, Lord. I thank you that I can bring my small needs to you as well as my big needs, Lord, that you can touch and and work in each and every situation, and nothing is too great, too small for you, and I thank you for that, Lord. I pray that you will continue to touch the Mori family, Lord, as they go through this time of loss. Lord, be their comfort, be their peace, I pray. Lord, I ask that you will touch all of my sixth graders as they are soon going into summer. Help them to focus these last couple of days on this last little bit of information that I want to squeeze into their very smart brains. Lord, I pray that you will be with us today. Watch over us. Keep us, Lord. Help us to be the people that you want us to be. Help us to show kindness and love to those around us. I love you, Lord, and I thank you for your many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We're going to go straight into math this morning, but let's do a couple speed drills first. You can shout out your answers if you have them, and I hope that... Um, those of you maybe that struggled with speed drills, I hope that while you're, you were doing distance learning that you were able to get a little speedier on them. That's not probably the correct grammar, but that's the grammar we're using. <laughs> so here we go. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a little cough today, so you'll have to bear with me. 36 divided by 9 plus 12 minus 8 times seven plus seven divided by nine equals short one short one today and i hope you are shouting out the number seven seven is correct let's do another one this one's really short even shorter than the one we did it's 74 hey, that's a big one Minus 14 divided by 6 times 12 plus 16. Divided by four equals. That one was a little trickier, so I went slow on it. And the answer to that one is 34. Give yourself a pat on the back if you had that correct. And let's do one more and let's go speedy Sam fast. Five plus three plus three plus five plus five plus three plus five plus four, plus six, plus nine, plus six, plus one equals. Ooh, that was pretty fast. And your answer is, and Natalie, Dylan, and Matthew are most likely shouting out, and Carson probably as well, 
55. 55 is your answer to that one. Good job, everybody. You wanna do one more? Let's do one more. Sure, why not? Here we go. Five plus two, these are all addition. Again, I'm starting at the top. Five plus two, plus nine, plus five, plus five, plus four, plus six, plus nine, plus eight, plus four, plus two, plus six, plus three, equals. Come on, Caitlin, Hannah. I know you got this one. Come on, come on, come on. The answer is, say it with me, 68. The answer is 68. Good job, everybody. You got any of those correct. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, and we are moving into math today. And we are going to page 281. And on your syllabus, I said that you needed to check in on YouTube to know exactly what was going to be assigned which is true, true, true. Page 281, I'm turning to that as you're turning to that. And as you can see, we are skipping some pages, I believe. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not wanting to go over, actually, I am wanting to go over measurements. I am wanting to go over time zones. I like to go over all that, but I feel that extracting the square root is a little bit more important. And, um, and um, so that's what we're gonna go with. We've talked about square roots a little bit. They're really not difficult, especially in sixth grade. I do say that in seventh grade, you will take them up a little bit, a step up or two. Um, so that's why I kinda wanna give you a, a, a taste of them, I guess is the correct word. Extracting the square root. You already know that the area Oh, I'm sorry, I don't want to go, I don't want to go that route. Let's, let's not go that route. All right. Let's think of it this way. You already know that six, let's see where I'm at. Six squared equals what? This is what we've worked on. This We've worked on it from the beginning, which is where we're supposed to work on it. But um, my, my book is telling me to hit like a hard spot and I don't want to do that yet. So um, we know that if we square a number, we multiply that number not by two, but by what? By itself. Six times six. When I square that is what? 36. 6 times 6 is 36. So the square root of 36 is what? This is our, our base. The square root of 36 is 6. So we're kind of going backwards from what we've learned before. A number is a perfect square. Let me tell you this. A number is a perfect square. Everybody say perfect square. If its square root is a whole number. So, is 36 a perfect square? Is its square root a whole number? Yes, it is. 36 is a perfect square. It has the square root of what? Of six. Now think about this for a minute. The number one is a perfect square because what's the square root of number one? My marker keeps messing up on me. The square root of one is one. Think about that, one squared equals one. So one is a perfect square. Um, four is a perfect square. What's this, I'm going backwards on it. What's the uh, square root of four? Two to the second power. This is my square root, this is my perfect square. Um, we know that, what's our next one up here? Three squared, we know is what? It's not six, it's not three times two, it's three times three. Therefore, nine is a perfect square as well. So when you hear the word perfect square, 
that means that the square root of that number is going to be a whole number, not a decimal and not a fraction. So I wanna get that out of the way. Let's go up to our uh, yellow box, extracting the square root. Number one, and we're just briefly going to touch on this today, nothing, nothing difficult. Number one, extracting the square root is the opposite of squaring a number. Number two, a perfect square, we talked about that already, is a number whose square root is a whole number. I have perfect squares on the board behind me. And number three, the symbol for a square root is the radical sign. I want you to get out a pencil and a scrap piece of paper or any paper, whatever, and I want you to practice a couple times making the radical sign. If we were in class together, everybody would have to come up on my board and make it. The reason why I like you to practice it is because it's different than a division sign. That's kind of our division sign. Usually my division sign looks a little more like this, or my division house. But a square root sign is similar, but yet different because it has this little check mark thing, like bam, 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 in front of it. And that is important to get down, especially for my sloppy hand writers. It's very important that you're making this correctly because the square root sign and the division house sign are two different things and mean totally two different things. So those of you that like to move quickly and like to move messy, I need the square root sign and your seventh grade math teacher will need the square root sign to look like a square root sign. All right, we've spent enough time on that. <laughs> so the symbol for the square root sign is, is the square root is called the radical sign. Everybody say that again, radical sign. Now, number four is read this way. The square root of four. That's how you say that when you see a number. The square root of nine. When you see this radical sign, that's how you word. That's the wording you will use. The square root of nine. The square root of 25. The square root of 81. Let's see how smart some of you are. What is my square root of nine? How about my square root of 25? Two, num two numbers that are the same number multiplied twice. And what's my square root of 81? Mm, nine. Perfect whole numbers are my perfect squares. All right, let's go ahead and look at, um, let's look at our examples here in the bottom of my yellow box. One, here's perfect squares. One squared equals, we already went over that one, one. Two squared equals four. Three squared equals not six. So if you're thinking six, please wrap it up in your mind and throw it out of your head because it's incorrect. Three squared equals nine. Four squared equals not eight, but 16. Five squared, we actually have on the board, equals 25. Six squared equals 36. And you will notice right under that, you have your square roots of each number. The square root of one is what? One. The square root of four equals two. See how they kind of match up just like your division families would. The square root of nine equals three. The square root of 16 equals four. The square root of 25 is going to equal what? Five. And the square root of 36 equals six. What are those numbers on the bottom called? One, two, three, four, five, and six. They are called perfect squares because they are not in a fraction. They are not in a decimal. Let's try some of these. Let's go on down to class practice. Go ahead and do this in your book. Eh, let's see. How am I wanting to do this today? Let me talk to myself for a minute. All right, talking to myself is over. I'm going to start talking to you again. All right, let's do number one. Actually, I'm going to rephrase that. Let's do number one on notebook paper. So get out a clean sheet of notebook paper. 
I have to have something down for you for a grade today. So put the, your name at the top and math in page 281. Put number one and you will want to letter A through L. A through L. The nice lovely part is that I'm going to do all of these with you. Yes, you still have to turn it in so that I can give you class participation, but you don't have to use your thinking caps too much because I want to do this with you today since it's brand new. I, I don't want to leave you out there on your own. So I hope you have your paper all set up and ready. I'm trying to talk for a minute to give you a minute to do that. If you don't have it ready and I'm moving too quickly, you can pause me, of course. Number one, letter A, the directions say to write the answers. Seven squared is what? And remember, when we square anything, we are multiplying that base by itself. So seven squared equals seven times seven. What is seven times seven? I hear Lucas saying 49. B, now they're asking us the opposite. Seven squared equals 49. Am I on the board still? Yes. What is my square root then of 49? It's going to equal what, everybody? Seven. Do you see how those are kind of like twins? They're kind of in the same family, whatever kind of word picture you want to get in your head for that. So B is seven. Let's look at C. Eight squared is not going to be 16. Lavinia will be multiplying eight times eight. So what is our answer to that? It is 64. Excuse me, everybody. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> 64. So Jacob, if eight squared equals 64 on D, what is the square root of 64? It is, of course, eight. I know I'm going slow, but I just want you to really get a grasp on this. Natalie, E, nine squared equals what? 81, nine times nine equals 81. Therefore on F, Mari, what is the square root of 81? It is nine. On G, 10 squared Caitlin Coombs is what? 10 times 10 equals 100. All right, so Dylan on H, what is the square root then of 100? It is, Dylan is saying 10. Now, we're getting a little trickier on the bottom, but not too bad. Well, now we're working on fractions. Can you guys tell my allergies are driving me crazy today? One half squared. Therefore, that means one half times one half. We know that when we multiply fractions, we can multiply straight across. Remember our arrows that we had going? So one times one is what? One times two is four. Therefore, one half squared equals one fourth. Everybody see that? All right, so let's do the opposite of that. What is the square root of one fourth then? The square root of one fourth is going to be my opposite of what? One half. Very good. Same thing. Let's try two thirds. I'm going to walk you through this. Two thirds squared equals what? Two thirds times two thirds. Don't forget my new little circle there is an algebra sign for multiplication. I can multiply these numbers straight across. Two times two is four. Three times three is nine. Two thirds squared equals what? It equals four ninths. However, if I want to find the square root of four ninths, I have to ask myself, what number squared did I get to get four? That would be two. What number squared did I get to get nine? That would be three. And therefore, ta-da, it's all in the same family. Two-thirds squared is the square root of four-ninths. 
I hope you're not saying, Sister Preston, I'm so lost and I'm so confused. I hope you're saying, oh yeah, I see that. I can do this. <laughs> if you're not saying that, then call me, text me, let me help you. So moving on for the next part of your homework today for circled problems, you have to do the rest of page 281, all of it, and the rest of page 282, all of it. So I'm not even going to tell you, just kidding, ha, 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 ha. You don't have to do any of that. You are done with math today. <laughs> I know some of you are like going, what, what? Oh, no, we don't know how to do that. Oh, oh Sister Preston, she's so mean and awful. See, I'm really not. You're done with math, but make sure that number one, A through L, is on notebook paper for me to see that you did it along with me in class. Go ahead and tuck it in your folder that you're going to drop off to me on Friday. So I hope you feel better about extracting square roots. And we will be moving on to um, language next. I will see you there. You're waiting for conjunction junction. What's your function? Sixth grade, we are in language and we're skipping a few pages today for some things that I want to focus on that I feel are a little more important. So you are opening up to page 256. I'm going to go straight to the blue box with you today. We are still talking about our parts of speech, um, prepositions and conjunctions this week. Today we're going to start on conjunctions. Conjunctions are joiners. Just follow along in your blue box. I, I know if we were together, I would be teaching this, this class a little differently, but today we're just going straight to the blue box. Um, and your blue in bold, your blue bold words. Whew. 
A conjunction is a word used to connect words or group of words. We have talked about conjunctions so many times in the past in sixth grade. Usually we talk about them with a comma in con a comma conjunction. I usually use this sign to know that you're putting two things together with a conjunction in the middle. The following conjunctions are called coordinating conjunctions. This is a new phrase for us. Coordinating conjunctions and, but, or, nor, for, yet. However, those are the same conjunctions we've always used. Now, this conjunction is not necessarily connecting, coordinating conjunctions are not necessarily connecting compound sentences. They're co uh, connecting to, like this one's connecting two nouns. Here's an example. I like grits and is my conjunction eggs. I like grits and eggs. Here's another one that's connecting to phrases. I read it in a newspaper or in a magazine. And if we were together, I would say for a ticket, what kind of phrases are those? Who's raising their hands? Caitlin Coombs, what kind of phrases are those? Those are prepositional phrases. I read it in a newspaper or is my conjunction in a magazine. And the last little example there, oh, Ariana, your daddy's name is in here. Jose answered the phone, my conjunction here, but the caller had already hung up. This is a conjunction that we've used often and it's connecting what? Two compound sentences. So a con conjunction can have more than one job of connecting compound sentences. So I'm losing some of you. You're getting tired and you're getting bored. So come on, stay with me for a few minutes. I can tell I because I know you well. So a conjunction can connect compound sentences, but it can also just connect nouns. It can connect prepositional phrases. Let's go on to the next section. And I know some of you are looking at that diagram and getting scared saying, is she seriously going to make us do diagramming during distance learning? No, I'm not. So get the, that worry out of your head. There are also coordinating conjunctions that go in pairs. Either or, neither nor, both and, not only, but also. So these are kind of twins. They're called correlative conjunctions. So you kind of think of them as Matthew and Maddie. They're like twins or Grant and Tate. Usually if one is there, you see the other. They come together, either or, neither nor, both and, not only, but also. Here's an example. Neither Logan nor Tyler caught any fish. Do you see how they're correlative conjunctions? They're joining words. There's something that has to happen in a pair. Notice the correlative conjunctions are diagrammed like any other conjunction. I don't even want to spend time on that, but let's go down to the bottom box. Learn the list of coordinating conjunctions. I want you to say these out loud as I say them. I'm going to go down, 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 down. And, but, or, nor, for, yet. Either, or, neither, nor, both, and, not only, but also. These are all of our coordinating conjunctions that you will be using in your writing. Let's go down to think A. In fact, let's go ahead and get out a clean sheet of paper. You will be turning some of this in for your assignment. Clean sheet of paper, think A. Please number on your paper 256 to 257. Make sure your name is on it and it says language at the top. First of all, I wanna read these directions. Underline the conjunctions, being sure to underline both parts of a correlative conjunction. Number two, I'm going to do some of these with you because I know a little bit of this is new for us. Number two, on the line before each sentence, write W if the conjunction is joining words. Write P if it's joining phrases or S if it's joining sentences. So here we go. We've got to get out our language magnifying glass to figure out which it is joining. <laughs> Number one, many people like chicken and dumplings. Here's what you're gonna do on your paper. You don't have to tell me the underlined part on your paper. You can underline it in the book. 
but all I want on your paper is your W, your P, or your S. Please take time to think about each one of these. I want to do a couple with you. Number one, many people like chicken and dumplings. All right, so what is my conjunction that you're going to underline in your book? Um, let's see here. Callaway, what is it? It's and. And is my conjunction. What is my conjunction joining here? It is joining chicken dumplings. Therefore, it's joining words. So on my paper next to number one, I'm going to put W. I'm going to skip number two and let you do number two on your own. I'm going to go on down to number three and do number three with you. We wanted the longer tour, but we did not have enough money. What's my conjunction that I'm going to underline in my book here? And I hear Dylan saying my conjunction is but, all right? I figured that out. Now, what is my conjunction joining? Is it joining words, phrases, or sentences? Well, let's see. On the other side of my conjunction I have, we wanted the longer tour. On the other side of my conjunction I have, we did not have any money. So Dylan, what is it joining here? It is joining sentences. Very good. Um, I want you, uh, let's go, I'll go ahead and do number four with you as well. You guys are getting lucky today. Number four, I could not find the book at home or at the library. What's my conjunction? I'm going to underline Mari. It is or, very good. Jacob, help me out with this one. Let's look at what's on both sides of my conjunction. Home and at. Eh, those are not really words it's, con it's joining, I don't think. I could not find the book at home. That's a sentence. On the other side of my conjunction is at the library. Is that a full sentence? No, it's not. So what do I need to put on my line? This conjunction is joining phrases. So I'm gonna put a P on my line next to number four. So I hope those examples helped you. You can also, of course, go back up to your blue box for additional help. I want you to go ahead and do numbers one through 10 on your paper for me. You can pause me and do that. I'm going on down to write B though, and I want you to listen along on these directions. This is important for write B. Write B, on notebook paper, write sentences using conjunctions as directed. So you're going to have to put your brain, your sleepy Tuesday morning brain to work a little bit here. Number one says, use and to join two proper, proper adjectives that modify the subject. Wow, use and to join two proper adjectives that modify the subject. This is gonna take some thought, but I want you guys to work on this. Number two says, use but to join the two parts of a compound sentence. That one's pretty easy. Number three, use both and, that's one of my conjunctions, to join two nouns used as the subject. Woo, 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 you guys can do this. Number four, use and to join two adverbs that modify the verb. Ooh, this is gonna take some thought, but I'm interested to see your sentences. I think number one is the toughest one. <clears throat> I might do that one with you. Use, but I still want you to come up with another one. Use and to join two proper adjectives that modify the subject. Proper adjectives? I'm thinking that they want capitalized adjectives. That's what's, that's what's throwing me. Um, Let's cross out proper on this and let's just use, cause I can make it easier for you doing that. Let's cross out the word proper and let's just say on number one, use and to join two adjectives that modify the subject. All right, let's do that. Number one, modifying the subject, Lavinia is kind and talented. Now, I have two adjectives here describing Lavinia, right? And what is my subject? My subject is Lavinia. 
Here's one thing I'm going to be looking for more than anything on this assignment, and this goes especially to Ms. Caitlin Coombs. I'm looking for capital letters at the beginning of your sentence, and I'm looking for punctuation at the end. Every time I see letters that are not capitalized or proper nouns that are not capitalized or no punctuation at the end of sentences on my sixth grade papers, honestly, it kind of hurts my heart. Because as your teacher, I expect you to be in the habit of doing that by now. And I'm going to um, really be embarrassed when you head on to seventh grade and you're still not capitalizing sentences and putting periods. So please get that done. It shows your sentence structure. I know you can do that. All right. So use your, use your uh, magnifying glass to work out one through four. It's going to take a little bit of thinking. If you need some help from your parents, ask them for some ideas. I think that'll... That'll be a good one. All right, so that's all of your language for today. And tomorrow you will need to meet me here on YouTube to know what you're doing for language. There is a white envelope in your folder and you have to have it out tomorrow for language. Make sure you do have that with you. Um, and we will be doing, let's go ahead and go to health next today. So I will see you at health. All right, we are going to move into health. But before we do that, I want to talk real quick about history today because you're going to be doing all that on your own. You have worksheet 53 to do. Please do your best on that. Yes, you may use your book and no, you don't have to put page numbers, but you do have to put your name on it. So make sure your name's on that worksheet for me. So moving into health today and... Um, we are picking up at page 124, talking about something that's so important to me for you to kind of get into your heads the importance of it. I think it's good to know about things like this before maybe you face some situations in your life. So that's why we're talking about it. Some of you may say, I don't, you know, this is not anything I'm ever going to face. And well, I hope not. I really hope not. But um, I, if you ever do face it, I want you to remember my sixth grade teacher talked to me about how dangerous this is. So actually, we're picking up at the bottom of page 123. I stopped there yesterday. But um, let's go ahead real quick. I keep backtracking here and go over that quick checkup together. You did not have to do that on paper. That's on page 123. A drug which prevents bacteria from multiplying. Anybody remember that from our reading yesterday? That's called a sulfa drug. Number two, a drug which destroys or stops the growth of bacteria. And many of you have been to the doctor and gotten this type of drug for like strep throat or an ear infection. It is called an, I hope I hear you saying, antibiotic. And number three, the first antibiotic to be discovered was called what? And it's still in use today. The very first one was called penicillin. <coughs> Excuse me, number four, drugs which cause numbness. Um, this is for when you're having like a major surgery uh, on um, maybe on a bone or stitches or something. Anesthesics, anesthesics. Number five, the type of anesthetic which numbs only the part of body where it is applied, such as we talked about a tooth where they um, maybe put, um, give you a shot of this in your mouth to numb that part of your face, numb that part of your mouth. That's called a local anesthetic. And number six, a condition in which the body of the user becomes dependent on a drug in order to function properly is called addiction. And that's what we want to focus on these last couple of days of health. Abuse of drugs. I'm at the bottom of page 123. Make sure you have your highlighter out. Commonly abused drugs are often referred to as mind-altering drugs because of their effects on the nervous system. Continual abuse of a drug may lead to tolerance of and eventual dependence upon that drug. Drug tolerance occurs when a drug user's body becomes used to the effects of the drug. I want you to highlight that. Drug tolerance occurs when a drug user's body becomes used to the effects of the drug. 
that means you've taken that drug so many times that it no longer helps you because your body's just used to getting it. Um, larger and stop highlighting there. Larger and larger doses of the drug are then needed to produce the same effect. Therefore, to get the same effect of the drug, you have to take more and more of it. And is that good for you? Absolutely not. A habitual user, I'm on page 124, you, a habitual user generally can tolerate a much larger dose than a non-user. The need for larger and larger doses often leads drug abusers to commit crimes in order to purchase more drugs because, of course, they cost a lot of money. At the um, little comic strip above, it says malnutrition is common among drug abusers because they often neglect the needs of their body. A lot of times, uh, because of the drugs, they're actually starving their bodies to death. They're very skinny because they don't feel like they need food when that drug is satisfying their needs. So as you can see, this is all very important for you to know, very important for you to stay away from. The regular use of some drugs causes dependence or addiction. The user becomes unable to function normally without the drug. If the user goes without the drug, he will sometimes experience withdrawal symptoms. A person who is dependent on a drug is referred to as a drug addict. Let's go down to this comic. I've heard of someone ODing on drugs. What does OD mean? When someone ODs on a drug, he takes a larger dose than his or her body can tolerate. And it could and usually results in death. And it does stand, OD stands for overdose. Let's go up to the top of the second column on page 124 and talk about marijuana. And let's highlight this. The most frequently used illegal drug is marijuana. Stop highlighting there. It is made from leaves and blossoms of the hemp or cannabis plant. Marijuana has extremely limited medical use. It may be prescribed by a doctor to treat the eye diseased glaucoma or to treat sickness caused by anti-cancer drugs. Any other use is illegal. Common slang names for marijuana, you can read those on your own. Um, I'm moving on down to short-term effects. Marijuana contains more than 400 different chemicals. When it is smoked, it produces over 2,000 chemicals many which are harmful that enter your body through your lungs. So do you see the danger in this? Because marijuana is fat soluble, which means it's dissolved in fat, it can remain in your body, including your brain, which is oh so important for days after being used. The younger the person using marijuana, the greater the potential harm to the body's systems. Again, I'm being very serious about this. A lot of times when I teach this in sixth grade, I get lots of giggles and lots of laughter because it's kind of a subject that makes my sixth graders nervous. But I'm wanting you to see the seriousness of this and the necessity to stay away from it. Marijuana also changes the way the nervous system works. It alters the user's feelings and thoughts, often creating a dreamy, relaxed state. The user then feels no concern for anything. At other times, the user feels panic and dread. He may become confused, irritated, unfriendly, or even hateful and mean. Marijuana often distorts the user's sense of time so that a few minutes may seem like an hour. It affects the user's vision so that close objects may appear far away while distant objects may appear close. Some marijuana users may even have hallucinations seeing, hearing, smelling, or feeling things which actually do not exist. Does any of this sound positive or good for you? Absolutely not. This drug has such an effect on the short-term memory that even a small dose makes it difficult to remem remember something that was just seen or just heard. Would you enjoy your favorite sport if you could not remember which players were on the team? Or if you forgot which sport you were even playing? The marijuana user may have trouble understanding what he reads, and he has a difficult time carrying on a logical conversation. Students using marijuana, therefore, have an extremely difficult time with their work. 
but because marijuana affects the user's judgment, the student no longer feels concerned. So what? Who cares about my work? Marijuana affects the peripheral nervous system in such a way that messages are not sent accurately from the brain to the muscles. Another way, it very negatively affects your body. The resulting poor muscle coordination causes clumsiness and increases the chances of having an accident. The user may not be able to walk along the street or ride a bicycle. Definitely, definitely dangerous for a user to be driving a car. Not only dangerous for himself, but dangerous for who else? For anyone that he's driving alongside on the road with. Long-term effects. Scientists believe that smoking marijuana damages the respiratory system even more than smoking tobacco. Marijuana is inhaled more deeply into the lungs and is held for a longer period of time. Habitual marijuana smokers often suffer from bronchitis, which is a swelling or pain in the bronchial tubes, coughing, sore throat, chest pains. Researchers also believe that long-term marijuana can use can lead to, yes, definitely, lung cancer. Marijuana may impair the body's natural immune system, causing the user to become frequently ill. Again, nothing positive about this. It's all bad stuff. It's all bad news. Inhalants. Chemicals which cause hallucinations when sniffed or inhaled are called inhalants. A slang term used for inhaling chemicals is huffing. Many young people try to quote unquote get high by huffing, thinking it will be safer than using illegal drugs. Let's let's stop right there. Do you think anything that's bad for you is going to be remotely safer in any way? Absolutely not. What many people do not realize is that at high concentrations, many inhalants are even more dangerous than drugs like cocaine. Inhalants are absorbed into the what? Into the bloodstream. Where does your blood go in your body? All over. And through the mucous membranes of the nasal passages. Many household substances are frequently abused. These substances have strong odors because the liquid in them changes into gas and escapes into the air. If the gas is inhaled, the drug contains in the fume, the drug contained in the fumes enter the body. Those who inhale large amounts of these chemicals experience a confused dizzy feeling which lasts from 15 to 45 minutes. Some of the immediate effects of inhalants are headaches, vomiting, coughing, sneezing, nosebleeds, lack of coordination and loss of bodily functions. In other words, one of your bodily functions is keeping control of your bladder. This causes you to lose control of that. Again, this just sounds terrible. Stay away from it. After huffing, some people have hallucinations. Huffing can permanently damage the nervous system. Repeated use can lead to brain damage, liver or kidney failure, blindness, and possible death. Huffing even just one time can be deadly. Inhalants can cause what is known as sudden sniffing death. That sounds funny, but it's a real thing. SSD is sudden sniffing death. The high concentration of chemicals causes cardiac arrest, which is a heart attack, and the heart simply stops beating. Teenagers as young as 12 and 13 years old have died or been permanently brain damaged by huffing seemingly harmless substances like air freshener and spray paint. Or do those seem harmless? Yes, we use them in our home. Can they be deadly? Definitely. Cocaine, they have to be used correctly, so don't have a fear of air fresheners. If they're used correctly, they're just fine. Cocaine, um, very, um, I don't want to say popular in a positive sense, but very popular of a drug that you hear about on TV, you hear about it in the news, um, very well-known drug. Maybe that's a better word than popular. Because of its effect on the nervous system, cocaine is called a stimulant. Stimulants are drugs which speed up the rate of the body's activities. They cause the lungs to work faster. They speed up the nervous system and make the heart beat faster, including your blood pressure to raise. The drug cocaine is made from the leaves of the coca plant. 
The coca, the coca leaves are refined to a white powder that is far more concentrated or stronger than the original leaves. Some surgeons prescribe cocaine as a local anesthetic, especially during eye, ear, nose, and throat surgery. In addition to relieving the pain, cocaine causes the blood vessels to tighten, thus reducing the bleeding during surgery. Except for this very limited medical use, cocaine is what, everybody? Cocaine is an illegal drug. Sniffing cocaine. Again, I, I just hear many of you thinking and saying, this doesn't pertain to us. Um, we're never going to do this. And in Jesus' name, I pray you're not. But yes, it does pertain to you because the more you are aware of something, the more you're aware of the danger of something, the less you are to ever be convinced by someone that it's okay or that it's not harmful. And I want to make you aware of it here at the end of sixth grade. Some users snort or sniff cocaine in a powdered form, which is commonly referred to as coke. When cocaine is snorted, it immediately, it immediately, it immediately enters the bloodstream through the tiny blood vessels in the mucous membrane of the nostrils and guess where it travels to. It travels to your brain. Repeated snorting of cocaine can permanently damage the mucous membrane in the nostrils. A frequent snorter often has a constant runny nose and appears to have a cold. Snorting cocaine may also damage or destroy the wall that separates the nostrils. You can tell in your nose, you have something that separates your two nostrils that can be destroyed. Cocaine can cause cardiac arrest by overstimulating the heart. Addicted to cocaine. The effects of cocaine usually wear off after 20 to 40 minutes. So tell me, is 20 to 40 minutes of getting a feeling of high, a feeling of whatever it gives you, worth all the horrible things that it does to your body? Because the effects of cocaine are brief, guess what the user does? takes more and more and more to continue to get that quote unquote high feeling. Cocaine causes dependence. Therefore intense intense cravings for can, 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 I'm sorry, intense craving for cocaine can return months or even years after a user no longer takes the drug. So stopping is the best thing that someone can do. However, it still hangs on in their life. Crack cocaine. The outreaching effects of cocaine have increased since 1985 due to the introduction of crack, a smoking form of cocaine. Because crack is easy to make, relatively inexpensive, and creates almost instant highs, it has become the drug of poorer people. The dangerous effects of crack are the same as those of cocaine. Cocaine and crack are two of the most addictive substances medical science knows of today. However, because crack is smoked, it affects the body systems much, what, much faster, making it, yes, more dangerous, more addictive. Again, I hope you're taking this very seriously and thinking about the negative aspect of it. There's a helpful hint down here. Cocaine starves the brain of chemicals that it needs to function normally. You have a quick checkup to do, one through six. They are all one word answers. Please get this on notebook paper with page 127 at the top in your name for me and tuck that in your folder once you are done. We will be moving into reading next and you will need your paper doll out for reading today that you worked on yesterday with memories of sixth grade on the back. So have that ready um, for me and I will let you know our next step on our paper doll. So I will see you in reading. All right, sixth grade, we're in your last class of the day today, and it's reading, kind of, not really reading, but um, I'm saving this slot for a reading. So yesterday, you were supposed to get out your paper doll that I gave you and write down your memories from sixth grade. They could be like one word memories. You could use a whole back to um, 
to do one important memory to you. So I told you some yesterday, so here's mine. And I actually wrote them down this morning. So I have junior competition, which was amazing. I, I got to see some of your basketball skills for the first time. I mean, some of your piano skills, uh, just, you guys are just awesome. Your speech skills, so cool. Rush, so many memories in Rush. Christmas party, we had so much fun at our Christmas party. From Mari Snowman um, to pin the, was it pin the nose on the snowman? Is that what it was? To um, opening your presents. Um, Valentine's party was another fun one. Dollywood field trip. The first time Lavinia ever went to Dollywood and we all got to enjoy that with her. I had so much fun on my Dollywood field trip um, with my class. It's always one of my favorite days. Worms in science. Caitlin Hanna almost ate her worm. Do you remember that? Um, those worms were so much fun. Spirit week. That just happened this past week. And some of you were amazing. Addison did a Star Trek. Daniel won for ACA Spirit Day. Oh my goodness, he looked fantastic. Mari's 80 hairdo was absolutely perfect. That was such a fun, um, fun week. Our missions fundraiser. Remember we tried to fill up all those envelopes? Some of you worked so hard for that. And I appreciate that so much. Say, spell, say. Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, what can I say about say, spell, say from rolling on the floor to standing on the chairs to, um, that was always a fun time. I never knew what was going to happen, but it was always a fun time. Distance learning. Uh, that's like the top memory of sixth grade, probably. Um, Bible from Mari for Christmas that all of you signed. It's like the most special Bible that I have. Um, I don't think I've ever cried when someone gave me a Christmas gift in class before, but that one actually brought me to tears because it really meant so much to me. Um, and if, oh, painting with our teeth I talked about yesterday when Jacob dropped his paintbrush. That was so funny. Our food art. That was fun. You guys like were so creative with that. So those are some things that I wrote down. Now, that was yesterday's assignment. Today's reading assignment. Um, also, let me go back. Please write in, it in marker where I can see it nice and clearly. Uh, I, it's going to help for what we need it for. Today's assignment is that you have to decorate the front of your paper doll to look like, guess who? Yourself. Here's questions I might get. Does it need to be creative? Yes. Does it need to be colorful? Yes. Can it be pencil only? No. Is it for a participation grade? Yes. Do you need to look around for craft things at your house to make it look awesome? Yes. Can you use whatever you want on it other than just pencil only? Yes. No pencil only. Um, can you use other things like, could you add a basketball if you enjoy basketball? Can you add, um, I don't know, a microphone if you enjoy singing? Yes, anything like that. I'm looking for creativity. I do not want your name on it. And I want, to, I want it to show that it is you, if that makes sense. So I did myself. Landry said it was, um, terrifying. Uh, Brother Preston said that he never wants to run across that during the night because it will probably scare him half to death. Now, I didn't think it was that terrible, but evidently they said it looks pretty creepy. So anyways, let me know what you guys think. So let me take my tape off. <laughs> I really did try. It's just, I'm just not artistic. I got sticky tape on the front. Okay, so this is me. <laughs> what do you guys think? Hi, sixth grade. How are you today? <laughs> okay, so I got this big curly hairdo thing off of a wig hair piece that I have. And look, I don't think my eyes look creepy. Landry thinks my eyes look creepy. I don't know what this is. This is from my tape that I had on there. So I made me a shirt. I put me some designs on it, you know, cause I like 
I like designing cl design clothing. I made me a long black skirt, which y'all know I wear all the time. And I tried to make it like, um, with an uneven hem, you know, like with, I don't know, you know how skirts have the uneven hems. I made me this cute little purse with like a beaded handle. Now, and look at the hair too. Look, I mean, we're like twins. <laughs> so I don't think, I don't see what's so terrifying about it. But honestly, tonight I am going to hang it somewhere in the night, like in Brother Preston's closet or something for him to go in and, and get terrified by. So I'll let you know how that experience goes. But anyway, so I want you to do a replica of yourself. You can use yarn. I don't care what you use. Um, craft things around your house. I cut off some of my big round head because it looked even creepier when I, it was the whole round head. So there you go. Hi, sixth grade. I miss you guys. <laughs> All right, here we go. I got to get serious. So I want to see a replica of you. Here's your assignment. Tomorrow, you don't have anything on. So you have today to work on this. You don't have anything on reading. Tomorrow, you have to send me an up close picture like this kind of where I can see your whole person and you need to send me a picture of the whole back so I can read it. So, uh, and text it to me to my phone, which is, most of you know it, 865-621-8443. If you finish today, you can text it to me today, the front and the back, but it is due tomorrow. So if you even want to work on it again some tomorrow morning, you're welcome to do that. The terrifying Sister Presson. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I just, I think the hair is like the coolest idea that I could have come up with. Um, because, you know, I have big, um, messy curls. So some of them look kind of ratty. Oh my goodness. I got to quit staring at her. But anyways, this is your assignment. This is actually going to be used on Thursday during some of our end of the year program. So I must see your pictures. It is yes, a participation grade. If you don't get it done, if you don't send it to me, it will be a missing assignment. Does everybody understand that? I hope so. All right, so that's your reading assignment for today. I hope you have a great Monday. Um, and um, let's see, tomorrow, tomorrow on, no, no. Oops, I hope you have a great Tuesday. It's not Monday. It actually is Monday because I'm recording on Monday. So I'm not as crazy as this thing looks like I am. I hope you have a great Tuesday evening with your families. Try to do something fun tonight. Um, I'm actually going to try to talk somebody into playing phase 10 with me later tonight because that's my favorite game. So um, so we're going to do that tonight after supper. So I will um, see you guys on Friday. I'm excited. I've never come up to um, drop off before. And I'm going to be there Friday because I must see you before summer, um, before summer starts. So... I will get to see you and talk to you for a few minutes and I cannot wait. And I might bring creepy sister Preston with me too. <laughs> no, I'll probably leave her at home. But <laughs> all right, I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good afternoon. I love you all. Bye-bye. <laughs>